This year alone, more than 50,000 people did the dangerous journey across the Mediterranean Sea in order to get to the European Union. The management of migrant and refugee applications is a problem that has been dragging on for years now. Will a new pact to reform the system reconcile divisions among member states? The European Commissioner for Home Affairs, Hilva Johansson, will discuss this and more on the Global Conversation. So, it's a dire situation in the Mediterranean. 700 people already died this year. Uh, the United Nations Migration Agency uh, director, Antonio Vitorino, is insisting that uh, state initiatives are lacking for the efforts of uh, rescuing at sea. Will there be a new joint EU mission? I must say that what we see now from the Italian uh, Coast Guard is really impressive. They have rescued, I think, already more than 30,000 people this year. And we also have the NGOs, but to a much lesser extent, of course. The state initiatives are the big ones when it comes to search and rescue. But we have to prevent these dangerous departures in the first place, uh, because there is always a risk that somebody will go, go missing or lose their lives if they... Uh, departure on these dangerous journeys. That's why it's so important with prevention, fighting the smugglers, but also offering legal pathways, safe pathways to the European Union. We see that in the hand, Italy is, is, is the main arrival point, is at the forefront. The government uh, just declared state of emergency for six months. And we also see that, uh, you know, the interior minister of France criticizing the government, saying it's not being able to manage migration. What would you say to this? I think that Italy is under a huge pressure, and I think they are managing it pretty well. The state of emergency in Italy is, of course, a national decision. But uh, as have I understand this, this helps Italy to cope with a quicker um, reception. Um, improving the reception capacities in a quicker way in the country. And that's absolutely uh, necessary with these huge numbers of arrivals. But it's important to say Italy should not be alone. We have to support Italy here. Tunisia is currently a major departure point uh, for migrants and refugees, both nation nationals of that country and citizens from other African uh, countries. You recently visited Tunisia and discussed it with the government. What will be the measures put into place to somehow uh, steam uh, uh, this flow? We have now reached a very good agreement with the Tunisian uh, government and the authorities to uh, deepen our cooperation. That contains to step up our support for their border protection, both with the Coast Guard but also at their southern borders. That also includes helping them with building capacities for registration and reception for the migrants but also to uh, cooperate when it comes to police investigations, to go after the smugglers. We have also agreed on a legal pathway, so talent partnership, so that there will be possibilities for Tunisians to come legally to the European Union. So let's talk about the EU Pact on Migration and Asylum, which is uh, the instrument to, to promote greater solidarity, um, including on relocation. Uh, there is ongoing uh, negotiations on uh, legislation that has to be reformed. How confident are you that more countries will want to welcome refugees and migrants? And can some of these relocation and resettlement and other measures be binding so that not Every member state is allowed to opt out. Now we're working together to counter uh, the high numbers on the central med. So we are working together to deal with uh, emergency situations, but we're also working together to find a long-term legislative solution to a stable way to manage migration in an orderly way. And so far, we have made enormous progress when it comes to the negotiations. Of course, fingers crossed, still uh, pa uh, some steps to go, but I'm very confident, actually, that we
we will be able to reach a compromise before the end of this legislative term. So in spite of all those efforts for a common approach, uh, we see that, uh, for instance, the Council of Europe recently warned the EU against uh, practices of uh, pushbacks of uh, migrants and, uh, and, and refugees without processing their request. This is, of course, illegal under the international law. But Lithuania just decided to adopt a law that uh, previews to use that uh, instrument in emergency situation. What do you think of this uh, decision? I'm in close contact with Lithuania. I was in Vilnius in February, that discussed directly with the minister, and she is very open uh, to, uh, together with my services, look into this uh, legislation and see what kind of changes is necessary to comply with the EU acquis. And we are in that process right now. At the same time, uh, we see that uh, this, there's a lot of talent, there are a lot of people that can be useful at the labor force here in Europe, be it Germany, even Spain. I understand that they are interested in some pilot projects with Tunisia, Morocco and other. How would this work? It works. Uh, it will work very well. We are in a labor shortage in almost all member states in almost all sectors, I should say. And this is really a, a golden opportunity to find new relationship with many of our partner countries, investing in the legal pathways. And what we offer from the Commission side is the talent partnership where we also can support, for example, building capacity on, on, uh, on training and vocational training and language courses before people leave to work in European Union. And that could be done also in a win-win situation, for example, investing in training in Tunisia, for example, that will uh, benefit both those that would like to stay in Tunisia, but also those that would go for a few years or one year to work in one member state and then maybe go back. The other side of the coin is, of course, sending back people that are not entitled to international protection as refugees, but also have not applied uh, for a contract uh, to work in Europe uh, in a regular way. Um, do you agree with this strategy by European Union governments of kind of threatening with withholding uh, trade access, uh, visa agreements, even uh, development aid to countries that refuse to cooperate with these returns? People could not be returned to countries where they are not safe. That is one thing. But a lot of people can be returned to the country of, of origin in a safe way. So that's why we are using actually the, uh, in the visa code, the so-called 25A mechanism, that when a partner country is not cooperating well on readmission and returns, then from the Commission side we propose some visa measures towards that country. And now we see many of those starting to totally change their attitude and cooperating much better on readmission and returns. And that, in, in turn, will open up for more legal pathways. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner, for being with us. Thank you.